Hi everyone, welcome to Mr. Wagon's math class. We talked about direct variation equations. Today, we will be talking about different linear equation for you to understand that. Let's see different examples around your house. Let's go. Here's an example, the direct TV or the dish. For you to install a dish, you have to have people coming into the house, install the dish before you use it. So you have to pay starting cost for you before you use the dish. And then you start paying monthly payments to continue watching TV. Let's go see another example. Okay, here's another example, which is electricity. You have to install a meter before you start using the electricity. You will get monthly payment even though you do not use any kilowatt. And that's because of the meter. So there is a cost for having this meter first. And then every time you use the kilowatt, you will pay a price. So you have a starting cost and then the kilowatt you will pay monthly. Now we're filling up this car. We are starting with a full tank. Guess what happens when we drive per mile? The amount of gas in the tank will decrease per mile, but we started with a full tank. Let's go open a saving account. I have $250 to start with to open a saving account, but then I'm gonna start depositing $50 per month to increase my balance in my saving account. So watch how you start with an amount and that's the starting value. And then the rate of change is what you do per month. Now that we know there are some real life applications where we have to pay before we start using that service. For example, your TV or your satellite service. There is installation fee for them to bring it to your house and then you start paying monthly. Or like the electricity, there is a meter that you need to pay for before you start using the electricity and pay for it monthly. And there's so many different situations like that in real life. So how can we represent this situation in an equation? And that's what we're gonna start with now. Linear equation, so we're gonna come up with another linear equation other than the direct variation equation that we worked with last time. We know that linear equations, when graphed, they make a line. So here's a graph with the coordinates. This time I am not going to start with zero, zero. I am gonna start with any point on the y-axis. So look at the blue dot, it's on the y-axis. For it to be on the y-axis, x has to be zero. So the coordinates for that point on the y-axis, x is zero, y is any number, which is b. We call that dot on the y-axis, the y-intercept. Now let's choose another coordinate on the graph, which is x and y. For us to come up with the equation, we use the slope again, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So let's name the first coordinate x1, y1, and the second coordinate x2, y2. Substitute those numbers in the equation, you end up with m equal y minus b divided by x minus zero. So simplify that, y minus b divided by x. Now I need y by itself. I need to isolate y. So what do I get rid of first? The x. Multiply both sides by x. You end up with mx equal y minus b. Again, I need to isolate y. So now I need to get rid of the b. Inverse operation is to add b to both sides. You end up with mx plus b equals y. Rearrange that equation so you can have y by itself isolated you will end up with y equal mx plus b. This is your linear equation that we will be talking about today. Now that we came up with the linear equation written in slope intercept form, y equal mx plus b, let's discuss this equation. y is isolated by itself, that's how I know it's written in slope intercept form, where m is the slope, which is the number attached to the variable x. Always the number attached to the variable x is the slope. And b is the y-intercept, 
which is the number that stands alone. It's called a constant. That's how I know or distinguish between the slope, which is the number attached to the x, and the y-intercept, which is the number that stands alone in the equation, as long as y is isolated on one side of the equation. Now, we also learn th other things about the slope. When we graph it, we use rise over run. And in word problem, it means a rate of change. Any word that has per, every, or each shows a rate, which means a slope. The y-intercept is where the line intersects the y-axis in the graph. And in real word application, it means the initial value or the initial cost. Any word that has starting initial or beginning indicates the starting value or the y-intercept. Now let's practice finding the y-intercept and the slope from equations. You have two examples, number one and two, and I will keep the equation of a line y equal mx plus b, where m is the slope because it's attached to the variable x, and b is the y-intercept because it's the constant by itself, or a number stands alone. So now let's look at number one. First thing to see, is y isolated? Is y by itself on one side of the equation? Yes, it says y equal. There's nothing else on the same side as the y, so it is written in slope-intercept form. Now let's look at the variable x. The number attached to the variable x is positive 3. So the slope equal 3. Now the number that stands alone is the 7, which means the y-intercept equal negative 7. Take the sign with the number or change minus to adding a negative. So the y-intercept is negative 7. Now the second problem. Ask yourself, is y isolated? Is y on one side of the equation by itself? No, it has negative 1 or minus 1. So rewrite the equation in slope-intercept form to isolate the y by itself. Write the equation. Now get rid of minus 1. Inverse operation is to add 1 to both sides. You end up with y equal negative 2 third x plus 1. Now I can distinguish or identify the y-intercept and the slope because the slope is the number attached to the x. And the number attached to the x is negative 2 thirds, so the slope is negative 2 thirds. The y-intercept is the number that stands alone. Positive 1 is the y-intercept, and that's how you know which one is the slope, which one is the y-intercept from an equation. Today's lesson is to graph linear equations in slope-intercept form. So this is the slope-intercept form where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. So the first step is to identify the y-intercept and place a dot on the y-axis. Step number two is to identify the slope and then write it as a fraction if it's not already written as a fraction. Step number three, use the slope to draw other dots on the graph. And step number four, which is the last one, is to connect those dots on the graph to make a line. Now let's practice graphing this equation. I am leaving the four easy steps to graph any linear equation written in slope-intercept form. And I know this is written in slope-intercept form because y is isolated. So step number one is to identify the y-intercept. And remember, the y-intercept is the number that stands alone in the equation. The number that stands alone is positive two. See how I took the sign with the number. Now go on the y-axis, find positive 2, and put a dot. Now identify the slope and make it as a fraction because I need to use the rise over run on a graph to draw other dots. The slope is the number attached to the variable x. In the equation, the number attached to the variable x is negative 3, so the slope is negative 3. But it's not written as a fraction. I need to write it as a fraction. And to do that, just put a line and over 1. That means you need to go, instead of rising up 3, and I'm going to go down 3, right 1, to draw other dots. So now I'm going to use the slope to draw my other dots, which is step number 3. Go down 3, right 1, and put a dot. Do it again. Go down 3, right 1, and put a dot. When you go down 3, that means y decreasing by 3, and when you go to the right one, that means x increasing by 1. What if I go the other way? What if I go up 3? What makes it a straight line? If you go up 3, then you go left 1. Because every time in y increased by 3, 
x has to decrease by 1, so you go left. And watch how it made a line when you go up 3, left 1. When you have a negative slope, it's an inverse relationship. One value increase, the other one has to decrease. Now let's practice with this real-life application and see how can we graph linear equations written in slope-intercept form. The cost y in dollars of taking a taxi x miles is y equal 2.5x plus 2. I will keep the easy four steps to graph linear equations. So here's the graph. The graph has an x and y, and I always use the first quadrant because you can't have negative amount of money and you cannot have negative amount of miles. So the numbers on the x-axis, what do these represent? One what? Two what? Three what? And the y-axis also has numbers. What do those numbers represent? When I say one, one what? Two what? So I need to identify what does the x-axis represent and what does the y-axis represent. And it tells you right there in the, equa in, the, in the problem. X miles, that means the x represents the number of miles. And it tells you up there what cost y in dollars. That means the y-axis is the cost in dollars. So these numbers now, they mean something. Graph the equation. For me to graph it, step number one is to identify the y-intercept for me to plot it or to graph it. The y-intercept equals 2 because it's the number stands by itself, which is positive 2. So go on the y-axis, positive 2, and put a dot. That's the y-intercept. Now identify the slope and write it as a fraction. So the slope is 2.5 because it's the number attached to the x. Now I need to write it as a fraction, so just put it over 1, which means you're going up 2.5 and write 1 because the y is increasing by 2 every time x increases by 1. That's the same thing if I use if equivalent fraction, which makes it easier for me to graph. The cost 5, which is the y, will increase by 5 for 2 miles, which means I go up 5, write 2. So let's graph two dots using those uh, slopes or those ratios. So from the two, that's where you start from. That's why it's called the starting point. You start from two, go up two and a half, write one and put a dot. And if I use five over two, I start from the two, go up five and then write two and put a dot. Now connect them, you make a straight line. Interpret the y-intercept and the slope. The y-intercept is 2, and the y represents the cost. So the starting cost is $2. And watch how I use starting to interpret or explain what the y-intercept means. Now, interpret the slope means explain what the slope means in the contents of the problem. The slope is 2.5, and we made it as a fraction. And the 2.5 would be the y, which is the dollars, and the 1, which is the miles. So the cost per mile is $2.50. That's how you interpret the slope, which is using the word per, every, or each. So at the end, to graph linear equations in slope-intercept form, use those four easy steps. Know what the y-intercept is, know what the slope is, use the slope to draw different dots, and then connect them to make a line. That's it for today's lesson. You guys have a great day.